A new day, a new Pro Cycling Manager video. Today we're going to start off Season 3 of our Pro Cycling Manager career mode with Rembe Pro Cycling Team Sauerland. Brought to you by Rembe Pro Cycling. So, the start of a new season, so much work to do. We just got promoted from the Continental Division, the Fat Division in Cycling, to the Second Division, the Pro Team Division. In other words, instead of having to do the season planning for 10 riders, I have to do it for 27-ish riders now, so... That's gonna be a lot of work. But hey, before we start that, let's take a look at our 2026 squad with Rembe Pro Cycling. Let's start off with our best rider, Tim Torn-Teutenberg. He's our newly signed sprinter with 75 sprint, 75 acceleration, and quite a bit of potential, five-star sprinting potential. And his hill stat is 68, his cobble stat 71, so even more versatile races should fit. That brings me to our second signing, Niklas Behrens, basically the lead out for Tim Torn-Teutenberg. Niklas is a tank of a man, so mountains not exactly his liking, but 75 Full sprint 70 acceleration that's solid for a lead out and that's where Yannick Steinler comes in because he might be the third part of our lead out 74 flat 73 sprint sounds like the perfect guy as third last man in his sprint train but also next to that he's our best cobble rider 73 and our best time trawler 75 and prologue also 76 so yeah in our biggest races combining these three riders should result in a pretty damn solid lead out train sprinting aside we actually signed proper GC and climbing talent as well starting off with this man Pablo Torres, 75 mountain, 74 medium mountain at the age of 20. 5-star potential, 5.5-star potential when it comes to Climber. But despite currently having 67 time trial, he's only got 2.5-star potential in that, so that's a weakness. Fellow Spanish rider Adria Pericas is also joining the team. 71 mountain, 70 medium mountain, 19 years old. He's also 5-star rating when it comes to stage races and Climber. So for now, he's climbing support for Torres, but he could also become just as good. And that brings me to our biggest talent in our team. Luis Joe Lures, German rider, 22 years old, so little a little bit older than Pericas, five and a half star potential, also five and a half when it comes to stage races and climber, four and a half star when it comes to time trial, so very versatile as a GC rider. And he's already a pretty solid rider, 71 mountain, 69 time trial, so I'm looking forward to see what this rider grows into because he could be our German Grand Tour winner in the future. And this is quite interesting, his previous team Bora already invested in wind tunnel for him, so we don't have to do that anymore. He's got a bonus on time trial permanently. That's great for me. We also signed Hector Alvarez, 19 years old. Pretty bad stats at the moment, but Cobblestone, 69. That seems to be five-star potential, so this could be our future cobbler. Together with this guy, Paul Fitzkin, 19 years old, five and a half-star potential when it comes to Northern Classics. Right now, only 67, though. Better puncher right now. But hey, in the long term, these two riders could be our cobblestone leaders. Anyway, I'm super enthusiastic about our 2026 Rembe Pro Cycling squad. There's talent everywhere, and they're only going to get better as they age, so I can't wait to get started with races. Because with this team, we should be able to win quite a few races this year. Talking about races, it's time to do our season calendar. We need to plan which races we want to ride this season, so... Let's get started. So, it took quite a while, but our season calendar is basically done for. Valenciana is our first race of the season on the 20th of January. Flat sprint for Tim Torn Teutenberg. After that, over to Mallorca, also in Spain for five days in the Mallorca Challenges. Quite a few climbing stages in there as well, so... That should be fun. After that, New Zealand Championships, Time Trial and Road Race at the start of February. But our biggest stage race in the first part of the season will be Andalusia. Proper mountain stages in there, so I'm very much looking forward to riding this race and see what we can do there. But after Andalusia come the one-day races in Belgium. Kuhne, Brussel, Kuhne, I would love to ride that because... I think we can have a solid chance at the top 10 with Teutenberg and Le Samain, Criqueon, Montserrat, Nocre Course, GP de Rijn France, Brede de Coxeide, and most importantly as well, Brugge de Panne. Those are races I also want to compete in. After that, back to stage races, Tour of the Alps, Tour of Turkey, Hungary, but also one day race in Eschborn, Frankfurt. This will be an important race because remember, we are a German team. Before the national championships in June, we've got ZLM Tour, Tour of Slovenia. After that, Sibiu Cycling Tour, Tour de Land, Tour de Wallonie. So stage races everywhere. You might have noticed no World Tour stage races yet, like Pyrenees or Tirreno Adriatico, because honestly, I feel like our team is not ready for that yet. But in the last quarter, that does change because I'm riding both Bologna and Renui Tour, so two World Tour one week races. Finishing off the season with the Bamers. Cycle Classics, one of the most important one-day races in our year. Anyway, calendar is set, time to set up the sponsor objectives. So, I've set up the sponsor objectives, six in total, so quite a few races we need to do well at in 2026. Starting off at Kuhne Brussel Kuhne in quarter one, basically a cobble sprint classic, we have to get a top 10, and I think it's possible. In the second quarter, also a sprint classic, Eschborn Frankfurt,
Discord. We have to get a top 20. That should be doable. I am quite surprised that the game considers that extremely difficult, while a top 10 at Kunibal Sukune is seen as easy. In real life, it's probably the other way around. Anyway, quarter three national championships, top 10 at the time trial, and top five at the road race. So that's a bit of a sprint one this year, so that should be possible with Teutenberg. If I get my sprint right, that is. And just like every year the Deutschland Tour is back, top three is now our goal, so a bit better than last time should be possible. Now our last sponsor objective is a bit of an odd one, a World Tour one day race, Bamer Side Classic, Sprint Classic, but our goal is to gain invitation to the race, so to gain a wild card to get to the race in the first place, and that is kind of completely out of my control, so... This shouldn't be a sponsor objective in my opinion. Anyway, that aside, these are our six sponsor objectives of the year, all pretty possible in my opinion. On to rider planning then, selecting the races that each rider is going to ride this season. This will take such a long time with 27-ish riders, so I'm not looking forward to it. So for the last hour or so, I've been doing rider planning and it's going pretty well, but I'm noticing that I've got some riders like, for example, Noa Isidoro, only six race days, so... I need to add more races to my calendar. So I was declined by Besesh, so I added a Lula tour. I decided to add the likes of Almeria and Cheyenne as well. I tried adding a few French races like this one, but I got rejected for loads of them. I also added some filler races like Tour de Algo for not so great riders or weaker riders in the team because then they get some race days as well. And now we have to add those races on the rider planner to riders again. Finally, the season planning of every single rider on our team for the entire year is done for. Now the individual rider objectives. This will take a decade as well. Tim Turn Teutenberg's focus will be pretty simple. First of all, Kühne Brussel Kühne, also next to that, Eschborn Frankfurt and the National Road Race. Next to that, there's one race that's not on this page yet. The Bamer Side Classic is because our wildcard has not been approved yet. So we'll have to add that race manually through this plus. I think it's somewhere in September, so... Bamer Side Classics, there we go. I kind of do want to add Brugge de Panne as well because it's also an important race for us. Anyway, those are the five objectives for TTT this season. Yannick Scheimler will also be focusing on Kuhn Brussel Kuhne. Next to that, Eschborn Frankfurt for certain. And the National ITT. And I think I'll put the Deutschland Tour as a rider objective as well for him. There we go, four season goals for Yannick. For Pablo Torres, our climber, it's pretty simple. The stage races that do have proper climbs like Andalusia, Turkey, Slovenia and Burgos at the end of the season. Those were the three leaders of our team, but I also did so off camera for the rest of my riders. Now, I was looking at our riders and it looks like a lot of them don't have a trainer assigned to them, especially the new transfers, and some of the axes of training are wrong. For example, Niklas Benens is not a baradeur, he's a sprinter, basically a lead out. Anyway, I'll do this quickly off camera. There we go, correct axes of training, correct trainer assigned, we've got Julian Gerhardt complaining about his relations with his trainer, sorry buddy, but... You've got no leverage with me, you're worthless to our team. Honestly, I can't really afford it, but I feel like I have to send my riders to a training camp, so let's do that for about, let's say, eight days. Can I do every single rider? 24k, I literally cannot afford that. I can afford sending my riders to a three-day training camp, I'm sorry, but at that point, it's not even worth it. Anyway, no training camp then, I guess we're saving some money today. Actually, because of our financial situation, I can't actually invest much money into the facilities of our riders, so that's a bummer. But I would like to invest in high-performance tires for our most important riders, at least. Teutenberg, Steimler, Torres, Behrens, Herzog, Lürz, Wilks, there we go. These riders get a bit of an upgrade, and let's buy that, perfect. 352 euros in the bank, so we're almost broke. But hey, based on my finances screen, I'm gaining more money per month because of sponsor investments compared to the rider and staff salary, so the money should be going up month per month. And we are gonna need that money because Andre Greipel, our scout, has run away. He's not in our team anymore. And financially, I literally cannot afford another scout, so we're living without a scout for now. Anyway, I think that's about it when it comes to our season preparation, so let's start simulating towards our first race of the season, the GP. Valenciana, a sprint race. Oh, no, 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 no. It is the 6th of January, the date of the year, I fear. Every single year, I get an email called Evolution of Potentials, but when I open it, one of my riders or two of my riders reduce in potential and get worse, so I'm scared of opening this email. Let's take a look. We've got... As a result of testing, after winter preparation, the trainers have updated their evaluations of the potentials of the young riders, Fitzke became worse, and Isidora became worse. Every year, my riders become worse. Why? For Paul Fitzke, it's not even by a little bit. 
from five potential to four potential. That's a completely different rider than I signed. I genuinely can't believe this. This happens every year. Can't a rider just become more talented on the 6th of January? Why do they always become less talented? It makes no sense. One day I'm gonna lose it over this. Anyway, time to call down January 20th, Classica Comunitat Valenciana, our first race, Tim Torrentoytenberg, Steimle, Niklas Behrens, Leidert, Nihus, Rotman and Keug are gonna be fighting in a sprint today. And I actually think we've got a realistic chance of winning this against the likes of Ballerini, Fredheim, Rousseau, 74 sprint riders. We've got 75, but maybe a little less daily form. Actually, the form is pretty good. A plus one on Teutenberg, plus two on Steimle, minus one on Behren, so our sprint train's looking solid. 12 kilometers to go, Rotman is leading out the team at the front of the peloton. Keug is about to take over. There we go, Rotman out of the way. One attacker, I think it's Scott McGill up front. Four riders in the wheel of Keug, so... We've got everything under control right now. 4.5k to go, Leidert is about to be done, Steinle can take over as we speak. Come on, get you on the right, my friend, get you on the right. Energy gel on Teutenberg, Behrens, ooh, Teutenberg is getting blocked into Narnia. That's not great, get in the wheel of Enekan, there we go, maybe that's something. I'm gonna try and pause it for a second, because otherwise I'm not gonna make it. Teutenberg back in the wheel there, Steinle can launch a sprint right now, Behrens can launch as well. Teutenberg, perfect, launch right now, come on Tim Torn, TTT comes around, Fredheim, Rousseau, Tim Torn, come on, come on, come on! No, we're gonna lose against Clément Rousseau of Groupama FDG, getting second on our first race. That is rather disappointing. It looked quite good right there. Honestly, on the verge of greatness right there. Almost winning our first race, getting second with Tim Torntoytenberg, Niklas Behrens in fifth. Solid lead out, to be honest. I was pretty happy about that, but the outcome is kind of disappointing. Anyway, our next race is going to be a bit harder. The first of the Mallorca challenges, Trofeo Calvia, Hilly Parkour, Juan Ayuso is here. And we've got Emil Herzog, slightly improved from last year, but also Luis Jolers, pretty similar rider to be honest. So yeah, winning will be difficult, but we'll try. Okay, we're starting off with a minus one on Herzog, not great, not terrible. Luis Jolers with a zero day, so that's okay. With around 33 kilometers to go, there's still two groups ahead of the peloton. Only two minutes, less than two minutes actually, is the gap, so I'm not too worried. And the FNUA are smashing it. I'm trying to stay in position in the peloton. Appelbaum might actually be our leader with a plus two on the day, that's 74 Hillstad and still 67 sprints, so he could actually be a better option than Herzog and Lurs. Honestly, 8k left, it's starting to look like a reduced group sprint at the end of today's stage, to be honest, break is about to be caught and Fergus setting a proper tempo, trying to move towards the front of the group, seven and a half kilometers to go, come on guys, move up. 99 with Fergus, we go on the left side of the road, we've got Iago to take over right now, Fergus out of the way, my friend, four riders still in the train, so that's perfection, some attacks on the left with Wellens, Ayuso, etc. I'm gonna switch already towards Herzog because I think I'll need to, there we go, Herzog goes over Wellens, Ayuso, let's try and get to the front of the group right now because we just got the breakaway, two and a half kilometers to go, downhill, come on Herzog, come on Herzog, Lures in the wheel, Herzog goes, Lures can launch pretty soon as well right now, Applewam can launch right now, come on guys. Come on, guys, beat these guys, beat these guys. Come on, Applebaum, come on, Applebaum. No, it's gonna be fourth and fifth, I reckon. Yes, William Blumelevy wins. Honestly, we get beaten by better sprinters, so I'm not too surprised by that. Fourth and fifth, I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, back to sprinting then. Trofeo Cesalines, Tim Torren Teutenberg in our team with 75 sprint against the likes of Jordi Meus and Molano, which are better sprinters. So I want to at least get a podium, but I'm hoping for a victory, of course. Ooh, plus one on Teutenberg, plus two on Beren. So our lead out and our sprinter, we're both looking good. With about 30k to go, we just finished this climb. And to be honest, EF trying to make it hard, but we are not in trouble so now it's time to set up our sprint train. There is a split in the peloton though, but I don't think any sprint is all behind because it's still a hundred people in the peloton itself, setting tempo with Rotman right now, our full train at the front, so we're looking pretty good. Some late attacks over here, and it can going together with Bjerg, Haller, Robate, and Engelhard, but to be honest, so many riders still from Rembe, so... I can just control everything right now. Five kilometers to go, the Teutenberg train is on rails. Energy gel on Teutenberg pretty soon, right now. Steimler is ready to launch from the wheel of Leidert as soon as possible, right now, there we go. Leidert, don't block anyone, don't block anyone, get out of the way, perfect. Behrens in the wheel of Steimler, come on team. We're at the front of the peloton, looking good. Teutenberg not in the wheel perfectly. Behrens can take over right now, he can actually sprint lead out. There we go, Teutenberg in the wheel launches right now. Come on, Tim Torn, come on, Tim Torn from the wheel of Pickroll. Nah, 
We're not even gonna beat Badens, or just about we will. That was a, a bit of a mess print, that's for sure. Jordi Meus wins ahead of Rick Pleimers. Oof, 11th in the end, that's not a good result, but I feel like a victory is coming at some point this episode. Who knows, maybe a mountain victory. Trofeo Serra Tramuntana, medium mountain stage, 147 kilometers, all about this. This climb with about 25 kilometers to go. Against Lipovic, Soler, Guerrero, Piganzoli, all riders with 75 to 77 medium mountain. We've got Pablo Torres as our leader, 74 medium mountain, so let's see how this goes. Oof, half my team ain't feeling good. Wilkes with a minus three, Borish as well, Lyder at minus one, and most importantly, a minus one for Torres. So that's not great, but at least it's not decreasing his mountain stats. Okay, 45k to go. We're starting the smaller climb before the big climb. We're in a good position with Torres. I'm getting water to the front. I actually just got water to the front with Borish, so that's good. I just need to survive this first climb, and on the second one, we will cook. By the way, this ascent, very steep, very narrow, is actually terrifying. I always feel like half my riders will crash out here. Okay, that first climb went perfectly. 14.5 kilometers, 6% now. This is the big climb. This is where I need to try and beat my opponents. One third into the climb, the group is down to 55 riders. We're still full as a team in this group, so that's great. I won't be able to drop everyone on this climb though, and realistically, I don't have a sprint either, so it might be better to get over the climb with multiple riders so we can attack one by one. We've had some attacks up ahead, a group of 10-ish is gone, but I'm gonna catch up again, I think, on top here, so let's get towards 99 with Torres and bridge that gap very quickly before it goes into the descent. There we go, is that it? I think we closed that. One rider up ahead, that is Mark Soler. I've got two riders in this group, Torres and Pericas. Looking at our stats, 62 sprint on Torres and 60 sprint on Pericas, there's no way we are winning this race. Actually, Iago just caught up and he's got 65 sprint, so he might actually end up being our leader here. I'm gonna have to attack with Torres, I think, so I'm gonna do that right now on full. Iago in the wheel of Pericas, and I'm gonna do that. And that attack needs to come right now. There we go. Torres goes. Hopefully this does something. We've got Lipovitz in the wheel, I'm okay with that. Can I get into the wheel of whoever tries to counter that in this group with Pericas? We've actually got quite a gap, so let's try and work together with our man Lipovitz here. He's got a better sprint than me, but if I can secure a podium doing this, then I'm happy to do so. We've got Yoi trying to control that. Come on, Torres. Do it as my friend Lipovitz. Ride with me, brother. Ride with me. We've got some attacks behind. I need to make sure I can follow that right here. So let's make sure Yago's in a decent position because it looks like Torres will be caught. And we're still in the wheel of Lipovitz. About to go into the descent right here. Come on, survive. It's about to be closed, isn't it? I think it's about to be closed. The gap. No, it is not. I don't know. Come on. Into the descent, Torres. Into the descent. The gap is still 10 seconds. Guerrero's trying to close it. Yago, why are you dropping from the group? This makes no sense. Torres is empty. Get to the wheel of Lipovitz now. Get to the wheel of Lipovitz. Please don't sit up, Florian. Please don't sit up. Please keep riding. He's sitting up. I'm gonna have to... Oh, this is the finish. This is the finish. Oh my god, I'm so stupid. I did not realize the finish was here. My bad. Anyway, podium. Pretty happy with that. Let's be honest, not great forgetting about the finish, but getting second on a race like this, pretty happy with that with Pablo Torres, especially he didn't have a sprint, so he decided to attack and that worked out technically. Trofeo Poyensha, this is one for the punchers. Piganzoli, Mark Soler, Yanis Fazar, sounds a lot like climbers to me. We've got Herzog, Luis Joe Lures, also Noah Isidore. We'll try our best and see where we finish. So Herzog starting with a zero day, that's 73 hill and 69 sprint. We've got the likes of Lures with a plus two day, that's great, 73 hill as well and 69 sprint, so they're equal, but acceleration is better on lures and secondary stats, so I think Luis Joe Lures is our leader today. Last 3.5 kilometers, Isidoro can take over Burnett out of the way, there we go. Actually, he can defend Isidoro a little bit on this descent going into the climb. Climb's about to start, let's do 93 on Isidoro, and Gigel on Lures, there we go, 93, I think. Are we spending too much red? Maybe. Breakaway is still 25 seconds, but come on. We can catch that, right? 95 with Isidore, Herzog in the wheel, 97, something like that. Let's do 99, because otherwise we won't make it. Herzog in the wheel can launch right now. Lure's still in that wheel. Come on, Lure's. Break's gonna win. Break's gonna win. No, Guerrero tries to come past. Oh my god, we're gonna get beaten by breakaway riders. Burati is going to get second from the breakaway. What a disappointing race this was. We're gonna get like 
11th or something. Okay, not 11th, 9th, so able to clutch a top 10 last minute, but I gotta be honest, quite a disappointing result. I hoped we would fight for the victory here. Remember when I said I could smell a victory coming today? Well, this is our last opportunity. Trofeo Palma, Sprint Race, Tim Torn Teutenberg, once again, similar sprint field, Jordi Meus, Molano, and about 75 sprint riders. This race is our moment. We have to bring this home. Ooh la la, Niklas Behrens, plus two on the day, which means 76 sprint, while Teutenberg is on 75, so... Behrens is a better option today. 6.5 kilometers to go, we've got too many riders. Timler can go on the right, try and bring our team to the front, my friend. Try and bring our team to the front. Nihu's out of the way, come on, team. Teutenberg, energy gel, Behrens, energy gel. I don't like this race. It's way too twisty and every single corner, everybody starts breaking. Ugh, don't like it. Bar will take over from Steimler. There we go. Last four kilometers, Steimler out of the way, my friend. There we go. Bore, stop doing what you're doing. We've got Teutenberg in the wheel. Perfect lead out. Oh my god, this is looking good. Teutenberg can launch before this corner. Bauer can sprint as well. Why not? On the left side of the road. Behrens in the wheel of Teutenberg. We're spending too much energy, we're spending too much energy. Behrens tries to come around, Behrens tries to come around. Come on, Niklas, come on, Niklas, come on, Niklas! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! Yes! Yes! We've got our win! <laughs> oh my god! Niklas Behrens, the lead-out strikes! <laughs> what a win! Whew. My goodness. <laughs> what a win, man! I didn't think we had it, but we did. Niklas Behrens, first win of 2026 and his first win for the team. Perfect. Honestly, throughout this video, so close a few times and finally taking that win on the final race today makes me so incredibly happy. And we do it with our lead out, basically, because he had better form today than Teutenberg, so we made the right decision to make him leader. But hey, first victory in the bag this year, not the last. And on that note, I'll end today's video. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks to Rembe for sponsoring this series as well. And I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye.